hello hello dear viewers a very warm welcome to our channel it's very good to have you here in this video we are going to have a look at how to disassemble a four-stroke gasoline engine this is actually taken out of a three-wheeler a Bajaj RE three-wheeler now we are going to disassemble the engine the engine is not rotating because of uh, a stuck piston a stuck connecting road and con crankshaft now we are going to fix that problem basically this is as a result of oil starvation the owner complains that the engine is not rotating anymore so we are going to have a look at it as you can see there is a valve chain cover right here on the right side we're going to remove that and remove the timing chain these engines are timed by a chain that is connected to the crankshaft it's a long chain with two sides of uh, tensioners connected to the camshaft sprocket by removing this cover we are going to remove the chain and then those four heavy bolts are for the cylinder head and as you, can, as you can see on the chain cover side there are also two mini 10 millimeter volts those bolts are holding down the cylinder head assembly as well right here you see two of the screws connecting the camshaft to the sprocket we're going to remove those and then remove the sprocket from the camshaft and the chain can easily be removed that way you can lift up the cylinder height so the first thing you have to do is remove the chain from the sprocket and then remove the sprocket from the camshaft let's go ahead and do that if you're going to disassemble the entire engine it's, it doesn't really matter if the chain drops down but if you are going to remove only the cylinder head make sure that the chain is not going to drop into the crankcase otherwise you will be required to disassemble the whole crankcase in order to get access to the chain now the cylinder head bolts are removed we are going to lift up the cylinder head and that will detach it from the cylinder itself try to insert a flat head screwdriver and pry it up then you can simply lift it up see it is right here it slides out and then what you are going to remove next is the crankcase the crankcase next you are going to remove the cylinder see these are this is the cylinder head gasket right here remove the cylinder head gasket every time you remove the cylinder head it's a good idea to replace the cylinder head gasket with a new one as you can see this engine has a lot of trouble lots of oil burning and carbon build up on the piston head you, you can see also rust accumulation on the cylinder walls and i asked the driver and he said this is basically because of uh, excessive use of uh, gasoline stored in a tank that will absorb moisture especially this ethanol blended gasoline will have moisture in it and that has caused rust on the cylinder you, you see it right there on the cylinder cylinder is rusted and there is too much carbon accumulation it said there is frequent low oil reading which is basically the indication of uh, too much oil going into the crankcase so you see there is rust accumulation besides the rust the cylinder is in good shape yeah, we are going to clean that off and uh, reuse it again now let's go ahead and remove the oil lines this is oil line that is connecting the oil filter bracket assembly to the main gallery and then in order to remove the side cover go ahead and remove the clutch this is the clutch operating screw the clutch will slide in that screw when the clutch pedal is depressed right now here we have the oil dipstick go ahead and remove the dipstick and then follow by removing the oil filter assembly this is the oil filter housing the so oil filter housing will be removed open and uh, there is a spring loaded oil filter assembly every time you replace engine oil it's a good idea to replace the oil filter as well you can remove these three screws and uh, there is a spring loaded assembly that is going to press down the filter onto the oil gallery now let's go ahead and remove that it 
see when we open there is an o-ring on the housing o-ring has to be there and then the oil filter and assembly is removed then go ahead and remove the clutch side crankcase once removing try to tap it a little with a soft punch soft tapping will make it loose then you can start a flathead insert you can insert the flathead screwdriver and pry it open right here you can see the clutch assembly the oil pump and the crankshaft and the crankshaft drive in for the timing chain is all visible here there is also a gear selector mechanism now we are going to remove the gear selector mechanism by removing the pin punch it out there is a dowel inserted on the gear selector shaft so by prying that out you can remove the gear selector hub and then you can slide out the shaft that way you can remove the transmission selector shifter once this is removed then you can push the gear selector shaft down it will fall right into the crankcase and you can easily slide it out whenever you remove components like this always make sure that you visually examine for wear if there is excessive wear and tear it has to be replaced for our case this shaft is in good shape and the shifter assembly is in very nice shape so we are going to reuse it as it is let's go ahead and remove the clutch the clutch has a, a hold down assembly this is a clutch release mechanism it has a ball in it then remove the center bolt by preventing the engine crankshaft from rotating make sure that you are holding the flywheel with some mechanism preventing it from rotating when you are trying to loosen the clutch bolt otherwise it will be very difficult to remove it go ahead and remove the crankshaft assembly and the oil pump assembly on this side as well by removing the springs on the clutch you can remove the pleasure plates and multiple discs and one by one they can be removed out or you can slide out the entire clutch assembly once the tens once the center bolt is removed once the center nut is removed from the shaft you can slide out the entire assembly or you can prefer to slide it one by one okay and make sure also you inspect the condition of the pressure plate and the friction disc if they are in bad shape you have to replace them and uh, if you notice that there is lack of power on your three-wheeler it's a good idea to replace the clutch assembly that can be done by simply replacing the pressure plate and the clutch assembly and the friction disc assembly by doing so you can have a very nice power transmission from the engine to the transmission once the clutch assembly is removed then you can go ahead and remove the oil pump and the crankshaft assembly as well this is a wet type clutch this clutch is immersed in oil and it's a wet type clutch unlike vehicle transmission clutch vehicle transmissions are usually dry type but when it comes to motorcycles scooters and uh, the three wheelers the crankshaft the clutch assembly is usually a wet type it will be operating with multiple pressure plates and uh, multiple friction disc and usually immersed in oil right here we are removing the oil pump drive sprocket it has a pin and uh, a locking snap ring to keep it in place on the shaft once that is removed you can pry out the gear for driving the oil pump and then followed by gear for transmitting power to the clutch and then on the other side behind all these gears you can find the timing chain sprocket for on the crankshaft assembly now always make sure that you are also inspecting the condition of the keys that are joining these gears to the crankshaft itself if the keys are deformed if they are loose in the seat they have to get replaced always make sure that the gears are in good shape as well if there are any burn marks on the teeth or if there are any damage or broken gear teeth the gear also have to be replaced as well these gears they usually last the entire lifetime of the engine so they don't usually go bad unless there is some mechanical damage caused to them by due to malfunctioning or due to improper handling otherwise they stay life life otherwise they will stay for the entire life of the vehicle itself 
Now let's go ahead and remove the timing chain. The, light, the timing chain can slide out. As you can see, there is a timing chain guide that has two screws that also need to come out in order to remove the crankshaft. Now this is a tensioner. The tensioner can be removed. There is a pin that is holding the tensioner. You can slide out the pin and then you can pull out the tensioner. Now this is the flywheel side of the <coughs> engine. This right here is a connection for the speedometer. Well, this one is not functional. The speedometer is actually blinded here. They somehow blinded and uh, is not using the three wheeler for this particular case. It's not using the speedometer assembly, but this is where the speedometer for the three wheeler goes. And as you can see on the right side, there is a reverse switch reverse transmission switch is located right next to the speedometer assembly you can drive the axle cv joint coupling on the differential by simply loosening the 13 millimeter bolt but before removing the bolt make sure you pry a lock mechanism is there on the side of the bolt make sure that you are also loosening that before prying it out and this is a very challenging duty where you remove a magnetic flywheel from the crankshaft it's a little challenging because of the magnetic force but with a simple pry you can remove the flywheel from the crankshaft make sure that you are holding it firm and once the flywheel is removed, make sure that the magnets are intact and not broken. They sometimes get broken. If the magnets, any of the magnets are broken, then you need to replace the entire flywheel assembly. For our case, the flywheel assembly is a very nice shape. Now let's go ahead and remove the trigger and uh, the magneto coil. This is a coil that is generating electricity for the entire three-wheeler. This is responsible for generating electricity for the ignition. The black part is the ignition triggering mechanism. And the magneto is also there to provide electricity once the engine is started. This, as you can see, it is producing. There is a rectifier and regulator assembly installed on the vehicle. This is going to be connected to that rectifier and uh, rectifier and regulator assembly. The ignition coil is also powered by electricity generated from this magneto. You see right here, there is a black part that we are going to pry right now is the one responsible for generating the ignition. The ignition is generated and induced by that inductive mechanism. Once the magneto is removed, then you can remove the housing of the entire assembly on the flywheel side. Doing that, you can disassemble the engine into two main halves and uh, the crankshaft and connecting rod assembly can then be removed out easily let's go ahead and do that and whenever you are replacing the bolts make sure that you know exactly where it is going to be fitted again when you reassemble it because the length of the bolts is a little bit not uniform some of them are longer some of them are short so always make sure to remember which goes where. On this side, you can see there is a oil drain for the differential assembly, and uh, the differential assembly can also be removed by removing bolts holding down the housing cover of the differential on the sides. By removing those, you can remove the differential and. Uh, the transmission can also be easily pulled out. Well, on the clutch side, we have here, right here, the oil pump. The oil pump has three bolts holding it down. There are O-rings in two of the holes. This foreign material is there. There are O-rings on two of the holes. Those are providing as a intake and discharge for the oil pump. Right here, you see those two holes. They have an O-ring on them. Make sure that the O-rings are in good shape. For this particular one, we have found that the O-ring has deformed 
and there is some foreign material inserted in the system that might have caused oil starvation as a result of that oil starvation the crankshaft and uh, the connecting road has stuck together now let's go ahead and price the clutch housing side by doing so then once the, this housing is removed you can pry out the crankshaft because there is nothing holding it let's go ahead and do that you can simply lift it up lifting up this assembly will remove the housing and then you can easily slide out the crankshaft well when this is open you can see the differential you can see the engine crankshaft you can see the manual crank mechanism that is available on these three wheelers if you happen to have a problem with the electrical starting system you can just use a manual start the spring loaded one is a manual start now see the crankshaft and the connecting rod assembly can be pulled out as you can see the connecting rod is not rotating whatsoever on the crankshaft and that indicates that there is a total damage of the connecting rod well, we will send this to the machine shop. The machine shop guys will press it out by pressing out and uh, inserting new connecting rod and new bushings. Then we are ready to reassemble it. You can remove the piston by simply removing the snap ring on one side of the piston pin. You can slide the piston pin out and the connecting rod can be separated from the piston. And always make sure that you are aware of the side and direction of the piston when reinstalling right here you see me trying to pull out the another side of the differential so that the differential and gearbox assembly can be removed from the entire assembly differential on the lower side reverse direction and the gear changing mechanism on the other side right here you can see this one is a power transmission for reverse and normal direction of rotation and here we have the transmission you see the transmission have multiple gears this is a four speed transmission the larger gear goes to number one and uh, it gradually goes down one two three and on this one the smaller gear is uh, like a counter shaft serving like a counter shaft the smaller t is for one two three four this is the speed gear on the counter shaft this is the one that is receiving power from the crankshaft and provide supplying it to the transmission this is the manual kickoff mechanism the differential can slide out in such a fashion always make sure that you're checking the condition of the bearing the condition of the side gear pinion gears and the main input gear for the differential has to be checked in our case these are very nice they are in good shape so we will be reusing them so this is how you can simply disassemble the four stroke engine of a auto rickshaw well dear viewers that is all we have for you regarding how to disassemble a four-stroke gasoline engine rickshaw if you like this video please smash the like button if you are new to this channel don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification so that you'll be the first to get notified whenever we come up with another video till then stay safe